Welcome to Hyperphysics. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss a powerful theorem in relativistic electrodynamics. So let's get started. So to understand this powerful theorem, we have to go through some questions. So while doing the questions, I'll explain the method. So we'll see the first question here. The question is like this. In an inertial frame, uniform electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and satisfy modulus of E square minus modulus of B square is 29 in some units. In another inertial frame, which moves at a constant velocity with respect to the first frame, the magnetic field is 2 root 5 in the z direction. We have to find the electric field in the second frame. So we have two frames here frame A and frame B, frame A and frame B. Okay, so, so let's consider for the first one, frame A, it is said that this electric and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to write E dot B is equal to zero. And in the same frame, it's given that this E and B satisfies the relation modulus of E square minus modulus of B square is 29 okay so it's already given that in the other frame which is moving at the constant velocity with respect to the frame a has a magnetic field of uh, two times root 5 in the z direction i'm going to denote as k cap okay so the theorem states that the theorem is suggested by lorentz this is something called as the lorentz invariance the lorentz invariant this states that for any frame, like any inertial frame, any two inertial frame, then in that case, E dot B and E square minus B square is invariant. Under all coordinate transformation, these two quantities, E dot B and E square minus B square is invariant. So by using these two ideas we are going to solve this question so we'll solve this question by looking at the conditions here so as e dot b is equal to zero in the frame a similarly we can write e dot b in the frame b is also zero i'm going to denote this e prime and b prime that is equal to zero so this relation has also to, has to satisfy here so i'm going first i'm going to write this like this i'm going to say if uh, e dot b is zero i'm going to write if it is already given that the magnetic field b is given as 2 root 5 k cap in the uh, in the frame b so i'm going to write like this if i'm going to assume e prime the electric field to be e x prime i cap plus e y prime j cap plus e z prime k cap then i can see that if i take a dot product then the k component will be uh, become one other components will become zero so that means that the k component must not be there in the electric field in the second frame so that means we can avoid these two these two options because it has a k component in the electric field we are we are asked we are, we are asked to find the electric field in the second frame right so these two options we can avoid it instantly now we have another uh, invariance that is e square minus b square is 29 so we know that i'm going to write this as like i'm going to take the first option uh, for, let's say i'm going to take the option d and i'm going to find uh, i'm assuming e to be 7i plus 7j e prime right so i'm going to take the modulus of it modulus square that will be equal to 98 right so if i'm going to do the same thing here finding the modulus of b b prime squared that will be 20 right so if i'm going to do that we'll get e prime modulus of e prime squared minus modulus of b prime squared will be 98 minus 20 that is 78 which is not equal to 29 
so we can avoid this option by using this method so that leaves us to the option a option a is the correct answer if you do the same thing you will get e square minus b square equal to 29 in this case now let's look at an another question similar to the one which we already done the question is like this an inertial observer a at rest measures the electric and magnetic field e to be a 0 0 b a 0 to a in a region where a is a constant so we have observer a observer a has an electric field e to be equal to ai and the magnetic field b to be equal to ai plus 2a k cap right and we have uh, another observer that is moving with the respect to observer a measures the field i'm going to write this as observer b that has an electric field e to be equal to ex prime i plus a j cap that is e prime okay and this is b prime that is a i plus b y prime j plus a k prime right so we have all the data here we use the standard the lorentz invariance that is e dot b and uh, e square modulus of e square minus modulus of b square is invariant these are the very important invariant quantities in the relativistic electrodynamics so now let's solve this question so for observer a we have e dot b we are finding e dot b what is e dot b e dot b is a square right let's solve for the observer a so what about observer b we have e dot b e prime dot b prime we have a e x prime plus a b y prime right so these two should be equal right so i'm going to write this as equal to a square right so now now we are going to find what is e squared the second quantity that is e squared minus b square for this this these things right now e squared minus b squared will be for the first one that is a square minus a square plus 4 a square that is 4 minus 4 a square so it has to be minus 4 a square right that is e prime that is e square minus b square has to be equal to minus 4 a square right now we have the second frame where e modulus of e prime square minus modulus of b prime square has to be equal to we, we know that that is uh, e x prime squared my plus a square minus a square minus plus b y prime squared plus a square right so i'm going to write this as e x prime square plus a square minus a square minus b y prime squared minus a square right so this will cancel out and we have e x prime square minus b y prime squared minus a square is equal to modulus of e prime square minus modulus of b prime square but we have e square minus b square equal to minus 4 a square so i'm going to write like this so that makes we can write it here i'm going to write it here so we have e x prime square minus b y prime square is equal to minus 3 a square right now look at the options so we have to find 
ex prime and dy prime it's like written in the same order right so in order to get minus in order to get 3a square because everything is squared so in order to get 3a square you have to have an a square minus 3a square then we have to have an uh, a square minus 2a the whole square right will give you minus 3a square but you don't see this option here right for ex to be a and b by to be 2a it has minus a and minus 2a a and a right so we can we can eliminate these two options very clearly that is this won't happen because ex prime square minus b y prime square is minus 3a square which is not the case for these two options so what will you do now so we have this one here this is the one we have to find this is the one we have to uh, solve next so let's say i'm going to write like this ax ax e a e x prime square a, a prime plus a b y prime is equal to a square right let's say i'm going to take the option c to be the one way i'm going to apply it here so we have a times minus a to be the ex that is e, here i'm taking ex prime to be minus a and b y prime to be 2a then we have what is this quantity this uh, this will be a times 2a that will give you what uh, let's say you don't have you have to get this one right let's see we, what we are getting that is minus a square plus 2a square that is a square so if you are doing with this one you won't get this kind of answer right so we can easily say that by using this e dot b and modulus of e squared minus b squared invariance or lorentz invariance we can find that this option c is the correct answer for this question so i hope you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel i'll be posting problems on different types every week please stay tuned and please like my video and share it with your friends thank you and thank you everyone for listening to my lecture thank you